G'day guys and welcome back to Joystick Arcade. My name is Mick Pone. And I'm Whipper. Joker and the Phantom Thieves are back in Persona 5 Royal, an enhancement to the original Persona 5. And in this week's Off the Shelf, we review two fantastic games from the Persona series. We go all the way back with Persona 3 Fez, where the series really started to take off. And we go and look at the critically acclaimed game for the PlayStation Vita, Persona 4 Golden. And we both go head to head in the last round in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. And if you stick around to the end of the show, we have a pretty sweet giveaway for you as well. Have you finally come to your senses? <laughs> How foolishly you averted your eyes from the truth. A deplorable imitation indeed. Best you part from that aspect of yourself. Let us now forge a contract. I am thou, thou art I. The world is filled with both beauty and vice. It is time you teach people which is which. Very well. Come, go on. Oh, Time to live that Tokyo lifestyle as we take on the role as Joker in Persona 5 Royal. You've been sent to the big smoke in order to live out a new school life, but as with all troublemakers, it always seems to follow you. Yeah, look, I mean, I knew I was the biggest bad boy of the countryside, but I didn't realise I was going to be the biggest bad boy of the big city. And uh, <laughs> everybody is such a savage to me. Like, I didn't do anything that bad. Yeah. I actually did the right thing. Like, the Yakuza. The Yakuza think you're bad. That's how bad you are. Oh, my God. Everyone's out for blood. And I'm just like, man, I'm just trying to live a, a normal life here. Like, even my Australian, like, family friend known as Sajiro, he, he, even he's been a savage to me. He's like, you're going to be on your ass if you screw up. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, mate, chill your beans, all right? But we do meet some good friends along the way. Ryuji and uh, even quite quickly, Morgana, the cat, despite him saying he's not a cat, I think he's a cat. I firmly believe he's a cat, but I guess you'll just have to play the game and find out. Now, Persona is one of those games that it throws you into the world. Like, you walk around the streets of Tokyo and you visit familiar locations if you've actually visited, like yourself. I've actually been to uh, Tokyo and I felt like I was there again. And that's probably the biggest thing that strikes me about this game. When you're wandering the streets of Shibuya, I felt like I was there. And everything looked familiar even, like it was just mind-blowing. And even seeing the shots of like Akibara and all that, I'm sitting here thinking, hang on, I've seen multiple shots of this. That's a real street. It is, yeah, and, exactly. And I'd love the little twists on some of the store names. That yeah. <laughs> like, what, there's King Spud there instead of Super Potato? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Amazing. And um, you can even visit, you know, diners or you can go to, you know, do some batting or you could even, you know, go eat a massive burger and even just hang out with your friends and all these things you can do. You can study in a library if you really want to. <laughs> Um, all these things you can do can actually boost stat points for you, which can help you progress in the story and unlock further things down the line. We've got guts, knowledge, charm, kindness, and... I'm failing to remember the last one. There's another one there. There's another one there. We'll put it on the screen for you. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of enhancements in Persona 5 Royal over the original Persona 5. What have we got? Well, first off, you might be thinking, why are you guys describing like a life simulator? Like, what, what's this game? Well, it's not just that. You enter a shadow world where you enter people's palaces. They're distorted sort of visions or perceptions of one's desires. And the aim is to steal the treasure inside to make them have a change of heart. Now, the big, big change that I love about Persona 5 Royal over Persona 5 your ammo refills at the end of every battle. Boy, did I start blasting! I went to town on those shitty, shitty Bam Bams and I loved it. Like, just being on it, mag dump into shadows. Like, I felt like a boss and a beast. Like, I wanted to just, you know, this, I'm not allowed to say it because it's a video, but you know, I just wanted to, you know, F them in the A with my bullets. 
And you know, like it, it, it was it was so satisfying to just mag dump a shadow. Even if they're weak to it, I'll still be going, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> like I would still be mag dumping into their ass and it was great. I felt like John Wick the entire time. Literally. Literally. And not only that, the combat system's gotten a revamp. Now the baton pass has been vamped up and you can chain together four. God, I feel like a Super Saiyan when you just chain it up and then you don't lose any health or any stat points on any skills you use if you chain it four times in a row. That's just... Oh, it just makes everything so, so, so good. It is amazing being able to chain up that bad and pass. Just being able to go like... I'll try and imitate Ryuji. He's like... Rip, 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 bam! With the final yeet! <laughs> like, it's such a thick slap. It's just... Oh, mate, like, I actually felt like a Phantom Thief for once in my life. Uh, the grappling hook as well, that made me feel super sneaky. Yeah. A little bit like Spider-Man, actually. I'm, a little I, bit. I may have gone, twit, twit, and put him in. <laughs> <laughs> I've had too much fun with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, I probably spent, like, a good five minutes just going, pew, 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 pew. Like, Shadow tries to see me. Ah, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but apart from all that, there's also a lot of other changes. So we've got a whole new palace, and I believe another semester as well. And we've got new confidence as well. Uh, one of them you can see on the screen behind us. And also we have Kasumi, who is, I believe, a Phantom Thief as well. And uh, we haven't really found out much about her just yet, uh, just due to the places we're up to. I'm up just after the second palace and Whippers just finished the first palace. Um, I know for shame we should be much further along by now, but... Sorry guys, we have other content to do. Sorry. <laughs> um, but um, from what we've seen, um, there's a lot of quality of life improvements too. Um, you've also got something called the Thieves Den and this I found really interesting. It's totally separate from the main game, but what it is, is you can just go in there and hang out chill and listen to the soundtrack if you like you, you can you can even you know look at cool little graphics of all the characters you've unlocked stuff like that you can even from what i've seen build a palace i think um but i'm not sure if it's literally building a palace um i need to look further into that but um it says build a palace so i'm quite curious to see what they mean by that if someone wants to clarify in the comments below okay <laughs> i've also been seeing some screenshots on the net now i'm not up to this particular part where it looks like you can actually play poker with the rest of the Phantom Thieves. That might be within the Thieves Den. I'm not 100% so. sure. Uh, now, what I've also discovered that within the Velvet Room, there's been one major change there. You can actually battle the original protagonists from Persona 3 Fez and Persona 4 Golden. And I hear they're a bit of a challenge. That I have not tried, but I am excited to see how that goes down. Oh, you got to be high level. Like top tier for that. Top tier for that? Oh, I'll do it on level 18. She'll be right. <laughs> um, you know, even though Chad Thunderclock, Mr. Yu Nakamura, Nakamura, I can never pronounce his name, um, from Persona 4, mate, I'll, I'll blow him away. Easy peasy. Um, but we've also got new songs in the soundtrack. And look, I hold the Persona 5 Royal soundtrack as one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a video game, period. Atlas just produce fantastic like, soundtracks no matter what, especially for the Persona series. It's just, there's always something funky, new about it. And that's the thing about the Persona series. The music really does drive the gameplay. You'll go from one part of the game where you're within the cafe and it's that really chill beneath the mask at mm. night that's going great. Then you'd walk outside and then you'd go to another building and then all of a sudden, if it's in like a, a funky arcade or a sort of club, all of a sudden it's the music bopping. starts bopping. It's and even, bop. even when you walk into stores like Big Bang Burger, all of a sudden the music then changes like whatever theme music their brand is and it sounds really staticky through like a crappy speaker. Yeah. But it, it just fulfills that entire aesthetic and I, I just love it. And my personal favourite thing is going to Akibara and playing the crane game there and collecting as many of the figurines as possible. Absolutely. But let's talk about the palaces real quick. So the palaces have had a few changes as well. The boss fights specifically are quite different. You actually, it's actually pretty similar at the start, I've found. And halfway through, it flips it upside down and it's totally different. And I noticed this in the Kamoshida and Matarame fights and... Yeah, it was quite different this time around, and I 
didn't quite know what to do, but you know what, I figured it out after a little bit, after a few tries, and it still felt just as satisfying as the original. Exactly right, and they've done this for balancing reasons as well, because Persona 5, and Persona in general, is known to have difficulty spikes at just the most random of moments, so I actually welcome these balancing changes. Yeah. And when it came down to the exploration of a lot of these palaces as well, we've discovered will seats. Yeah, these will seats are pretty different, and what I like is they really just wrap the whole, you know, you're inside a person's state of mind, you're inside their heart, and they just really just pull that all together. And you've got to find three of them inside a palace, and what you can do is once you've found the three of them, uh, you can fuse them together, and uh, they can form items for you and give you stat buffs and all that sort of stuff later on down the line. You've really got to look for the entrances to mm. those will seats too. They're not, they're not particularly easy to find. Thankfully, you get a good introduction during Kamashita's Palace, but you know, keep keep your eye out for those entrances. It really makes you explore absolutely everything. Yeah, I honestly missed two of them in Matarame's palace until I realized, oh crap, I need to go back and find them. <laughs> and then I did, but um, like you really got to keep an eye out for those little secret passageways. Uh, and as well as there's a few layout changes as well in the palaces too, especially towards the end of them. I've noticed they're just minor changes, but you know, you just got to go, it's more from going like one point to the other. So it's not terrible. Like it's more like instead of going through a corridor, maybe you're jumping over using the new grappling hook, perhaps. And I've also noticed some puzzle changes as mm. well. There was one particular puzzle within Kamashita's Palace. I'm like, hang on, that wasn't there previously. So I actually had to go and refigure it out. So I was relearning a palace and I'm, I'm like, I have played this one so many times. Why didn't I remember that was there? It was brand new. Look, Persona 5 Royal, it's the perfect perfect enhancement to the original Persona 5. I am loving every second of it and to be frank, I don't give this out often for a video game, like almost ever. Um, this game has captured me in probably one of the best ways possible. I'm just in love with all of the characters. They're all friendly. They're all just so entrancing to listen to. Like I feel like I'm not being annoyed when I talk to one of these characters. And just being in Tokyo, seeing the bustling life, it, it makes me feel like I'm really there. And fighting all the enemies as well and going through the palaces, I don't feel like I'm grinding. If I need to level up, I feel like I want to. You know, I feel like I need to. And for me to find a game that does that, it almost never happens. I always usually have one gripe with it. But with Persona 5 Royal, there is nothing to gripe about. And look, I want to give it a solid 10 out of 10 from me. Now look, I may come across as a bit of a fan, but I remember playing Persona 5 originally and I absolutely fell in love with the game day one. It was thanks to streaming, I was actually able to have the time to play it for once. And boy, am I glad I did. It's, it's just given me a different outlook on gaming, particularly JRPGs as well. And it just made me realize how much of a masterpiece and how much of a change it was and an upgrade it was over the original Persona 3 and 4. Sorry. Unfortunately, Atlas forgets 1 and 2, sadly. But for me, I, I cannot fault 5 and I can't fight uh, Fault 5 Royal. I, I struggled to find anything wrong with it. For me, it's a 10 out of 10 as well. And it, honestly, anybody wanting to start in the JRPGs needs to get Royal. It's the definitive way to play Persona 5, in my honest opinion. Get it, like buy it. It is worth it because it's average 200 plus hours of gameplay before the Royal enhancements. You've got an extra 30 to 40 hours on top of that as well. And that's not even including replays. So you are getting your values worth even at full price. And for someone who hasn't really been into much anime or even JRPGs at all, like Persona 5, the original, was actually my first foray into the genre and I fell in love immediately. So um, you've got that word from me as someone who was a newbie to the genre, um, now turning into a semi-weeb and I love it. <laughs> and don't worry, you don't need to play the original Persona 3 or 4 to get anything. It is its own self-contained story. So do not be scared to jump into it. Phew, that was tight. Tight? No, I'm doing this for art. Don't look over here, okay? Maximum strength! Maximum power! Maximum... Like! And those <laughs> might be lines you would have heard from a very classic game that rooted 
every single PC on the market back in the day. That's right, Crisis is getting a remaster this time around. That's right, so hopefully we'll see it, see it even more optimized for PC, though it's probably not gonna be as stressful on PCs. But for the first time, coming to consoles on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Actually the second time it's on console, but from what I've heard, they're actually gonna be remastering it off the PS3 and Xbox 360 copy of Crisis 1 that uh, came out, which has led to a few issues within the community because- Never knew it came out on those consoles. It actually did. Okay. And uh, the game was actually kind of, uh, let's just say downgraded in a few areas. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how that happens. I believe the, the wheel was changed where you can select the different like powers and stuff. And I think the weapons as well were slightly different in the uh, console versions of the game, but um, Nintendo Switch, like who to thunk it? I, like, I, I'm excited, it's, I'm keen. Switch recently even had a ray tracing demo on it, so it does work. Yeah. So I'll be interested to see how it performs. I mean, look, it's probably gonna be a solid 30 FPS, but hey. Yeah. You know. I mean, Crisis on the go, who can argue? I love Crisis 1. Now, we lead in from the happy news of a Crisis remaster to some unfortunate news. If you're a TF2 fan, you'll know this guy's voice, lovable, the voice of TF2 soldier Rick May has unfortunately passed away due to complications with COVID-19. I understand he had a large, large resume of acting roles, particularly in movies like Fiddler on the Roof was impressive, but he was also the much loved voice of Peppy Hair from Star Fox 64. Yeah, look, I mean, the soldier voice to me was absolutely iconic and it's a huge shame that he's passed away. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I don't really know what, what else to say, to be honest. He was a much loved voice actor within the gaming community, especially. The and TF2 community has actually banded together quite well. I found a video online of an entire dedicated server. All spawned a soldier, went into the center of the map and did a 21 gun salute. Absolutely beautiful. And the fan art has been coming out. It's all gorgeous. Everybody's quoting Soldier. There are even guys that said it was thanks to them playing as Tier 2 Soldier that they went and became soldiers as well. So they saw him as a direct inspiration. So, Rick, mate, at the age of 79, you will be sorely missed. May you rest in peace. <laughs> This week's Off The Shelf is a bit of a special one because it's a two-parter reviewing two Persona games here and we're going to be kicking off with Persona 3 Fez, one of 2008's best titles for the PlayStation 2. You take the role as Minato, or if you prefer to rename him, that's fine. You return to the port island of Tatsumi, 10 years after a major incident in your life. I'm not going to spoil what the incident is, I'll let you find out. Particularly for yourself, because you've not actually played the game. No, I have not actually. I have not touched Persona 3 Fairs, not even once, despite owning the game there. And I'm a big fan of 4 and 5, but I'm holding off to play 3 actually, until I've uh, finished 4 and 5. Now you actually think um, you should be going to 3 then 4. Yes, because you actually see how 4 really matures from 3, because there's quite a few differences that 4 completely fixes over 3. The biggest critical thing that I have with 3, you can't control your teammates' actions. So you can't exploit a shadow's weakness. You know your teammate has it, and you're like, cool, the, the AI is surely smart enough to figure it out. No, they just decide to yeet them with a bow or a sword or something. You're like... Mm. Okay, we promise the game's not shit. It's actually pretty good. It's a fantastic game, despite that. Despite that. The game is also... I would say famously... Or infamously more being difficult. It's got quite a difficulty spike. And it deals with some darker things as well. I'm not gonna lie. The intro to the game is actually pretty brutal with the first scenes you're seeing someone holding a gun to their head, but they're not actually trying to commit suicide. They're, it's actually how they summon their personas. It's called an evoker. And Persona 3 deals with this whole theme of memento mori, or facing one's death. And as you can see behind us, the whole color palette with you know the blues and the greens, it really does take that darker contemplative 
edgy sort of thing, which was one of your comments. You thought it was quite edgy. Yeah, from what I've seen of the game and you know, from, I guess, the soundtrack as well, it's got a very sort of dark, you know, gloomy, edgy sort of vibe going on, which, look, I dig it. Um, and it's a big contrast uh, to the other games in this series as well. Um, and I actually quite like that because it, it really helps you, I guess, relate more to some of these characters in the game and you can actually relate with their struggles and understand what they're going through and I feel that helps you play better, especially when you're in the in the Dark Tower, I believe, is, is it? Tartarus. Tartarus, yes. that's right, Tartarus. Yes, the place within the Dark Hour, basically a hidden hour between 12 and 1 o'clock. But I'll let you guys figure that one out because honestly, this is a game everybody needs to play if you're into JRPGs. It's available digitally on the PlayStation 3, but if you can find one of these and you've got a PlayStation 2, I recommend this is an instant buy. But it, I also recommend the next game we'll be showing off that really matured the series and I really think took it to its sky-high popularity, Persona 4 Golden. Every day is great at your Juness. <laughs> Persona 4 Golden, released for the PlayStation Vita in 2013 and originally released on the PlayStation 2 in uh, 2009. You play as protagonist, or you, as his name is, YU, um, and you've been sent to the regional town of Inaba and you're going to school and you've been sent to live with a distant family friend as well. And things, again, it's Persona, they get pretty cray pretty quickly, actually. Things get very cray because next thing you know, you're solving murder mysteries. That's right, people are getting axed left and right, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, damn, these are some grisly murders here, like, holy balls. I know, uh, all after hearing that bopping intro that they've got. Oh, man, like, this game is just a feel-good sensation. Like, I'm loving the upbeat nature of everything. Everyone's so happy and bopping away. It's such a contrast to Persona 3, which was a lot deeper and darker. But then you enter the shadow world or the backside of the TV, and when you hear the theme outside some of these, I'm going to call them palaces. Yeah. It's pretty much what they yeah. are. And the song that plays, it's actually called Backside of the TV, has some dark subliminal messaging in it. And I'm just it thinking, does. this game contrasts within itself and it's fantastic. It carries over a lot of the graphical looks of Persona 3, but tons of improvements. Huge improvements, such as the biggest one, being able to control your Teammates! Thank you, Atlas! Like, I, I can't stress it enough. Having teammates that just auto-attack is like the worst thing ever. Like, you want to be strict, you want to strategize when you're going up against shadows or big bosses. And let me tell you, this game does not hold your hand at all. It's also the best-selling game on the PlayStation Vita. Um, but this game doesn't hold your hand, especially against the first uh, boss fight, uh, Yukiko. And that was... Pretty ferocious. Ferocious? She destroyed me multiple times. I had to go to bed one night angry that she just kept <laughs> yeeting me, yeeting me, yeeting me. And I'm just like, why? And then one day the RNG was just on my side. <laughs> just like my enemy dreams. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, this game is a joy from start to, I guess, the point I've gotten to. I'm kind of about a quarter of the way through on my Vita. Um, but it's a joy because you can go around the town of Inaba. It's very regional, but it's chill. And the music that plays with you is so upbeat, funkalicious. Like, you just want to go out and explore. And the, the fox, I think, you find is pretty cool. Oh, yes, I the, like fox the fox is cool. Um, but... Your friends you meet along the way, Chie, Yukiko, Yusuke, there's another Yusuke, actually. Um, but these guys are, are so funny and comical, and I just love the dynamic that they have with each other. As well as some of the other characters that we personally I'm haven't sorry, met yet, I believe there's Kanji, there's also Rise, <coughs> Waifu, as well as Naoto, as well as everyone's unbearably right annoying pun like master me? Teddy. Yeah, I wish I could ban him. Look, he's cute, but for like five seconds, not gonna lie. But, I mean, 
Playing this game portably um, on the Vita and again on the TV using the Vita TV is an experience. Like I feel like I'm, like I'm I have a fully fledged console RPG in my hand, and that's just almost unheard of. Like leading up to now, which is just brilliant. It's a hundred percent another must-have title, particularly if you own the Vita. I'm not kidding. Find a physical copy, buy it. Even if you can't get a physical copy, buy it on the PSN. It's 15 bucks Australian. Probably give or take a little bit if you live in the US or EU. Um, it's dirt cheap and it's just a fun experience from start to finish. The characters are relatable. They entrance you with what's going on. The murder mysteries are just so engrossing. And you know, figuring out how this person died and you know what the death was like, and you know, going in to solve the next murder mystery case is just a fantastic ride. It's exhilarating, but it still keeps you bopping away to the banger of a soundtrack and keeps a smile on your dial. And these characters as well, dealing with their own internal conflicts. And from what I've heard, there's also a lot of representation in this game that not even Persona 5 has delivered, which was quite interesting and progressive. So. 100% a title for anybody interested in that sort of stuff. Welcome back to Last Round, where we're going head-to-head -head in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax on the PS3. We're going to be choosing up some waifus or some, some husbandos, and we're going to see who comes out on top this time around. We've got ready up. We're at our usual, usual streaming stations this time, not downstairs at the TV. We've got the green house. screens rolling, it's looking pretty fab. Ready to deploy. Gun Aegis, the Persona 3 waifu. The Persona 5 Yuka. Arena when? <laughs> I'd love to see a Persona it's 5 Arena on. That'd be sick to be honest. Like, I'd love to fight as Makoto or Kasumi. Like, oh, that'd be so sick. Oh, it'd be rad. Look, consider I mean, Persona 5 Arena would have Persona 3, 4, and 5 characters. That's a full fight, fighting roster. Oh, yeah. It's like a Smash tier. Like, Super Smash Bros. tier it. roster. Oh, I wouldn't say it's Smash tier, but... Like, in terms of amount of characters you'd have. It's getting up there. <laughs> Purely the amount. Ooh, where are we? Back at the arena. Yeah, but, like, what's the setting? Tartarus. Don't ah, move. hence the clock. You better be prepared. Round one. Get out there and wipe them out, That's right, take my fan of death! Take my persona! Yeah, that's right, an android girl has a persona! What are you gonna do about it? Oh, damn. Oh, damn! Oh, damn! Oh, damn, what am I doing right now? I'm just hitting buttons. Fighting for the best. Oh, gotcha! All right, I was on the I was on the defense too much then. Yukiko's got some range. Okay. Yukiko's not bad. Like she can really hit from the other side. But... She's a ranged attack. Okay. Alrighty, here we go. See, so comes out on top. Okay, I'm Mega Man. Whoa, okay. Man, okay, what I don't like is like... Oh my god. Now you know how it feels! I got out! Take that fan! Take it! Eat it! Oh! I don't know why I can't go fast anymore. Oh, yes, come on! I'm done. Oh, let's go! <laughs> I 
And that's it for this week's episode. Thank you very much for joining us. What did you think of Persona 5 Royal? Was it your best game of the year or was it not what you were expecting? And let us know in the comments below if you guys actually played Persona 3 and 4 and what you thought of it. Next week, we'll be taking a look at Predator Hunting Grounds. Will you be the hunter or the hunted? Get in the draft! <laughs> that was a really shit honey impression, I know. <laughs> Um, but we're also going to be checking out the latest entry in the Mana series, Trials of Mana on the Nintendo Switch and PS4. And I mentioned earlier, we have a giveaway. That's right. We're giving away one copy of Persona 5 Royal. Huge thanks to the guys at Five Star Games for hooking us up with a code to give away for one lucky viewer. So all you need to do is sub to us here on the channel. Make sure you're a sub on the channel and go follow our Twitter account down below, link in the description, uh, and you'll be able to win a copy of Persona 5 Royal on the PlayStation 4. It is a global giveaway as far as I know, so um, anyone, doesn't matter where you live, you'll be free to redeem the code. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell! No, you don't have to if you don't want to, but look, we do appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Until then, gotcha. See ya.